Good afternoon, everyone. U.S. GDP forecast 14% in May, now just two-tenths of 1%. Global food prices, near record highs, bad weather. Let's interpret that around the world. Grand solar minimum onset. The big thing to the left's going to sleep. Fertilizer frenzy, less fertilizer, less yields, even more. Food insecurity and higher prices. Beijing, first snow. Oh, scratch. Blizzard, early season, hitting the city. Hobart, Tasmania, coldest in 60 years. A foot of snow. Critical situation, North Sea route, 20 vessels stuck in ice or struggling through conditions just like this. I guess the polar bears will have plenty of landscape to frolic on. A new surveillance bill will allow Australia to spy on their citizens' internet activity. This bill gives the Australian government the right to disrupt private citizens' computers, hack their online accounts, and modify or delete data. Government overreach and corporate tracking are at the top of the reasons why VPNs are becoming more and more popular. You can head over to virtualshield.com and in the download tab, I'm going to choose Firefox. And click Install Now to add the Virtual Shield add-on. It's just that easy. And get started with your free 30-day trial. Install it, click Connect. You'll see the shield turn from red to green. And you'll see how from my initial service provider, I was able to even change my IP Virtual Shield network protected. If you want to stay anonymous online, you'll love Virtual Shield. This Black Friday, you can try Virtual Shield for 30 days. Free, plus 50% off for life. If you hurry, go to virtualshield.com forward slash adapt2030 or click on the link in the description box below. And now on with the video. So looking at a wider landscape here, if you start to connect these different dots, even in a simplistic fashion, you're going to find a lot of indicators that things are not as they seem in the economy and global food production. So we're starting over here, plunging export shipments sparks U.S. GDP downgrade. Economy on verge of contraction, contraction when it goes below zero. Trade deficit in the United States, fresh record lows, which means that we weren't sending out enough goods compared to what we were bringing in. And look how far down that has gone. And with its continued money printing, you could see why this is going lockstep right here. Atlanta Fed was calling 14% increase because of the rebound after 2020 in May. Now they're down to just two-tenths of 1% of increasing growth in the United States as the gross domestic product. That matches right up with, we're not producing anything. Everybody's staying home. Businesses are shut manufacturings at a snail's pace and we're printing an enormous amount of new money which leads to your dollars buying less and the world valuing the u.s dollar less it's all about belief to keep the system moving forward this one off bloomberg here goldman sachs talking about industrial supplies and materials dropping yet again see that giant spike down in 2020 at the depths of the world in lockdown, you'd have to roll back to 2009 to find something similar that we're experiencing today. That last financial crisis, yep, same, same, but different. Now, with the economic contraction in play in the U.S., and that would just be everywhere across the world that we're seeing right now, every single country is near the same. Global food price is getting close to a record high. And this is also... Effect after effect after effect, dovetailing in, mixing in the cocktail, if you will. At least they come forward here and say bad weather hitting the harvest around the world this year. Yep, that's a grand solar minimum onset. But then they also include freight costs, labor shortages, supply chain issues, larger fertilizer bills for farmers. The Achilles heel right there. The big thing on the left there, that yellow thing to the left, going to sleep. When it does, society is always reset. Incredible on the timing. Perfection in just understanding the cycles. 
If we look at the forecast here from Dr. Abudzamatov, director of the Pokovo Observatory, along with a plethora of others showing the same declining solar activity, solar cycle 25, solar cycle 26, bringing us to a grand solar minimum, reduced global food production, contracted economy, and repeats in history. World Economic Forum knew it. They timed it. It's about time to get everything reset anyway. Society reset inbound based on the sun cycles. Or was it somebody knew the cycles in advance and we're playing that game? But anyway, global food prices getting closer to a record high in the Bloomberg article in the related section. Soaring wheat prices, massive price surge continuing for fertilizer producers. That all adds into higher food costs, pure and simple. And here is, like I said, the Achilles heel. If we can't get as much fertilizer, we don't grow as much food. Don't care about the size of the land. Everything's based on an enormous amount of fertilizer and chemical input. Herbicides, how do you think they kill all the weeds? The fertilizer frenzy. Surging with natural gas prices increasing. Will you heat your home or will you eat this year? Your choice, A or B. And remember when I talked about 2009 with the economic contraction and the super cycle, that's the other spike. We've eclipsed that. So we are literally in record territory. Now, the expense of food here, different way to look at these next two charts. This comes from the United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization, FAO. Now, you notice they cut off the chart at 2011. It shows the dip. And then the increase to 130. Look at it a further back to 2009 yet again. And you'll see right after that spike, that's where the record high is coming from, is coming out of that contraction and economic devastation following the same exact pattern. So you can see where we're going to go with this. And in a short order here, we'll just boil it down into a single graph. Forecast, red on the bottom, nothing. Even the stock markets, blue chip companies, giant downgrades. Across the board, it is now confirmed everything is contracting. And with that being said, nothing being produced, so there is going to be a frenzy of buyers rushing for limited goods. Until it gets too expensive and demand destruction will occur, then we'll hit that stagflation and you realize that your dollars aren't going to be worth much and there's other assets to hold that might be better off. And so the onset of this grand solar minimum is now being confirmed with several things happening across the planet here. China, every single grand solar minimum collapses. The emperors can't hold it together. So when you're looking at this onset here of incredible early winter snows into Beijing, and see how Yahoo News, Beijing Forbidden City, coated in white as first winter snow arrives. Oh, so gingerly, you might think it's a few flakes. Oh, no, blizzard. Blizzard warnings. Early season snow. Blizzards, like we're seeing in the United States, we've seen a couple of years that wiped out crops, stranded. Yields out in the fields until the following year, and the USDA counted that as good yield. Oh, I love magic book cooking. Early season snows. Second highest level of the four-tier warning. More than 30 centimeters. Well, you can round that off to a foot. Blanketed. That's just in Beijing. But then all the way over to Tianjin in the coastal areas in Heilongjiang where they grow the wheat. Also blanketed. Incredible cold temperatures. Way out of season. About a month before what is normally expected. Now, don't get me wrong. Beijing gets incredibly cold during the winter. But this early with the snow showing a sign. Also, Hobart in Tassie, Tasmania. Coldest November night in more than 60 years. Now, remember the Southern Hemisphere is going into spring and December 1st will be the beginning of summer. So when you see the coldest November night in more than 60 years and a foot of snow also, 30 centimeters, both hemispheres, a foot. Now, the image here, which I find is startling, they show you a little bit of snow, maybe on a mountaintop, but in actuality, this is what it looks like close up. So if you were to just peruse that headline and take in the layout, oh, okay, some higher elevation snows. But when you start to look at it, at the foothills, Mount Wellington blanketed in snow. And it continued down near coastal. 
rare late spring snowfalls, one of the heaviest recorded, no less, with the temperatures. And Australia is meant to be incredibly cold over the next week and a half or so, with these types of 30 degree Fahrenheit below the normal temperature all the way through the end of November. So to say things are amiss and there's verification points that point to repeating cycles, a lot more validity in that. And here's one that's catching everybody off guard right now. Very few excuses for this one. Hard to even gloss over what's happening up in the Arctic right now. Barron's Observer, critical situation might be in the making in the Northern Sea Route. 20 ships stuck or struggling through that sludgy snow on the brink of turning to solid ice. They're sending emergency icebreakers up there to free these ships. Here on the map for you, and those larger islands offshore that you could skirt some ships through there, that's actually quite wide, hundreds of miles wide. That's all icing in. Dark red is solid ice. And that periphery pink that you're seeing is a combination of moving to solid ice. Russian icebreakers are on the way to rescue the ships. Now the ice isn't incredibly thick, but it is thick enough to stop ships in their tracks. Which is good because the polar bears will have an enormous amount of sea ice to now frolic on for their feeding habitats. And if anybody wants to check out the Canadian Ice Service Polar Bear Survey, there's 25,000 polar bears. 1970, there were 5,000. Canadian Ice Service, Canadian Government Research Project, the maps are out. And during these times of, well, strangeness, inflation, inavailability, you might want to get some storable foods. My Patriot Supply and Adapt 2030, the three-month emergency food supply. Keep yourself more Grand Solar Minimum prepared. That link's in the description box, along with tonight's images, stories, graphics, so you can do more research yourself. Dig in a little bit deeper if you want to than I've gone into in the video. I do appreciate you watching. Hope you got something out of it, and I will see you next time.